the smoke in the room clear, see, and there's the dog lying there, and his hair's all standing up, and the guy says, don't look at me, it's your dog. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Pa. Hey, you're home early. No, Peggy. Hello, Mr. Cartwright. What, a meeting break up? No, it's still going on, but I, I got tired. I'm bone tired. Do me a favor, will you? Put up my horse. Yeah, sure. Go on, have a rest. I'll be back in a minute. I got a great one. Oh, Mr. Cartwright, is my father still at the meeting? Oh, yeah, yeah, he's still there. He'll, he'll be along after a while, don't worry now. Oh, I'm not worried. Little Joe and I are having a wonderful time. <laughs> he tells the best jokes oh, yeah. I've ever heard. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Good night, thank you. Uh, Good night, Mr. Cartwright. <laughs> Madam. Oh, hi, Pa. How'd the cattleman meeting go? Oh, all right, I guess. I left early. Something wrong? Hmm? No. I'm just tired, I guess. Uh, it's no wonder the way you've been driving yourself lately. As soon as I get some sleep, I should be all right. Matter of fact, I think I'll... Hey, right now. Call me, Pa? If you have to tell stories at this time of night, tell some quiet ones! 
Shh, shh. Pa, Pa's trying to sleep. We, we'll be quiet, Pa. I think we better play checkers. Oh, Hoss. I'm awake, Paul. I'm awake. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry I awakened you, son. Huh? You go back to sleep now. Get right back in the bed and go back to sleep. All right, Paul. Good night, son. Thought you'd be asleep by now. Adam, I'm sorry I asked you to stop playing that guitar. You go right ahead and play it. That's all right. I'd just soon read. No, no, you play the guitar anytime you want to. You gonna make me mad. Didn't I warn you about double jumping me? Hmm? Where's the frog? <laughs> Come on, frog! Let's get her! <laughs> oh. Um, did, did we disturb you again, Pop? Huh? No, no, you, you, you kids just keep right on enjoying yourself. Where are you going? I'm going to town. But I, I just put your horse up. Well, I'll just have to get him out again. I've just got to get a good night's rest. Oh, Pa, we... Joseph, someday you'll understand. I heard some innocent bystander here. What's it to you? Why don't you mind your own business? Well, wait a minute. What's your... going on here? Well, I don't know what beat this fellow has with the young fellow he was chasing shooting at there, but public street is no place to settle it. I agree with you, Ben. What's your problem, mister? That young squirt won all my money in a poker game, wouldn't give me a chance to get it back. What's your name, mister? Frank Shermer. Well, Mr. Shermer, I got a piece of news for you. In this town, any man can quit any game just any time he's got a money. So either you get back in there and calm yourself down, play according to our rules, or you get out of this town altogether. Shooter, thank you for stopping that shooting, Ben. Mm -hmm. Say, uh, what you doing in town this time of night? Well, you know, Roy, I just couldn't get to sleep at the house. I came into town to get a room at the hotel and get a good night's rest, and that's just what I'm going to do right now. I'll see you in the morning, Roy. All right. Good night, Ben. All right. Good evening, sir. Good evening. I'd like a room for the night, please. Excellent. A comfy spot for a weary traveler. Asaya Potts at your service, sir. Just sign here. Good evening, Mr. Potts. Mrs. Jenkins. I'll get your luggage. I haven't any. No luggage? No, well, I'll be leaving first thing in the morning. With no luggage, I'm afraid I must ask for payment in advance. Hotel rules, you know. Oh, Mr. Potts, don't be so foolish, my boy. This is Mr. Ben Cartwright of the Ponderosa. So? Well, well, so it is not at all necessary to ask for money in advance. I'm afraid I can't be expected to know everyone in the territory. After all, I've only worked here a few days, you know. Well, that's all right. As I say, I'll, I'll be leaving first thing in the morning. How much is it? Uh, one dollar a night, but perhaps it won't be necessary. That's oh, all right. Now, what's uh, the room number? May I have the key, please? Uh, room number four, but there is no key. Uh, people kept walking off with them, and the management removed the locks. Just walk right in. Number four. 
Oh, Mr. Cartwright, I'm the widow Jenkins, Jenny Jenkins. And since the death of my dear husband, I live here at the hotel. Well, if there's anything at all I can do to help you, I'd be... Well, thank you very much. You're very kind. Good night. <laughs> Good night. He's, uh, rich, Mr. Cartwright? Oh, the richest, Mr. Potts, in the whole territory. And without a helpmate. Like me. Mr. Potts? Yes, Mr. Cartwright. Something wrong. Yeah, one thing. There's a fella sound asleep up at number four. Is it a dirty man in a filthy undershirt? Yeah, that would be about the description, I guess. Hamish Loy. Apparently, he's rented the room before. Now, whenever he gets drunk, he thinks he's rented it for yeah. life. Just throw him out. Throw him out? Yes. Just wake him up and tell him to get out. It's your room. You paid for it. There's no question about it. He has got to go. Get up and out. Come on now, this ain't your bed. Where are my boots? Huh? Where are my boots? Always take your boots off before you go to bed. That's manners. Yeah. Remember that, my boy. I wouldn't oh, think of going to bed with my boots on. No, of course you wouldn't. That ain't the cultured thing to do. All right, now let's get these boots on. Here we are. There. Oh, can you think you can manage that one? Oh, Mr. Cartwright. Is there anything I can do to help you? Oh, uh, oh, uh, no, Mrs. Jenkins. I think everything is under control here. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Uh, well, if, if I can help in any way, I'd be very happy to. I, I'm sure you would. Uh, I, I, I appreciate your offer. You know, I'm just up the hall in number seven, and, and if oh. I can do anything at all, well, I'd be very grateful thank you. to help you. Thank you very much. Surely. You're very kind. Good night. Oh, good night. Good night. Up we get now. Come on. Who are you? Oh, come oh, on, please. You're a good man. Yeah, look, maybe, maybe, maybe Mr. Potts will be able to find a room for you. That prissy Potts. I wouldn't ask him for the right time of day. Oh, well, fine. But by the way, what time is it? Is there anything wrong? Ma'am? <laughs> Ma'am? Good evening, Ben. Oh, hi, Doc. Yeah, are you having a little trouble with a lady friend? I, I, I got my room right here next door. Hmm. Number four there. And uh, I'm trying to get some sleep. And she's, she's crying in here next door, and I haven't been able to fall oh, asleep. Oh, you bachelors. You, you... What are you men doing at my door? Oh, excuse me. <laughs> well, it... Doc. Ma'am, I've got the room next door here, and... Uh, I've been trying to fall asleep, but I've been hearing you cry this I've got a long. perfect right to cry if I want, haven't I? Oh, yes, of course you have, ma'am. I've just been trying to get some sleep here. Isn't that just like a man? You hear a woman cry, but are you concerned? No. Do you offer help? No. All you can think about is your precious sleep. I'm sorry. I... 
Is this something I can do? No. I'm sorry I kept you awake. I'll try to say that my heart breaks quietly. <laughs> so you can sleep. Well, ma'am, that is the point. Ben. Ben. What? There's a cowboy in there with a bullet in his leg. Now, I need a man to hold him down while I take it out. Well, go downstairs and get Mr. Potts to hold him down. Oh, Ben Potts. He'd he faint at the sight of the blood. Now, come on. I'm all right. Oh, um, uh, what was the little lady crying about? Her heart was breaking. Yeah. Oh, well, Ben, now, don't you worry. If she was talking about it, you just bruised it a little. Oh, Doc. <laughs> Ben, this is Larry Newell. Larry, this is Ben Cartwright. <laughs> You're that young fella who was dodging them bullets down the street a while back. I thought that chairman missed you. No, but he didn't hit me bad enough to keep me from getting out of there. Now, look, Mr. Cartwright's going to hold you down while I get this bullet out. I don't need anybody to hold me down. Hold him down, Ben. Yeah. Now, now this won't be bad. It isn't now. deep. <clears throat> Eh, it's all right. I got it. I got it. Here we are. Ha <laughs> That wasn't bad. That Shermer's a pretty bad character. He, you're lucky he only hit you in the leg. He's a bad poker loser, that's for sure. I don't win very often myself, but when I'm smart enough to win, I'm smart enough to get out with it. I need that money. My mom's got a note coming due at home. Oh, where's home? Texas, Bowie County. As soon as Doc gets through here, I'm getting me a horse heading for there. There. Ah, that'll hold it. Yeah, oh, tomorrow you try to get somebody to change that for you. You understand? All right. Thanks, Doc. How much do I owe you? Oh, five bucks. That's for taking out the bullet and forgetting that I did. Well, that's more than fair. Well, thank you. Oh, and Ben. As for you, I think you could do with a little more rest than you've been getting. Oh, Doc, I'm going to get some rest right now. Sure. <laughs> well, good night. Good night. You get some rest, too, young fella. Oh, Mr. Cartwright, would you do me just one more favor? Well, not if it's going to cost me any more sleep, I won't. Well, I just want you to hold my wallet for me while I get that horse. Then, if Shimer comes after me, you could send it to my ma and... Address is right here in the wallet. Well, I, I... I just take out enough money for the horse, okay? Yeah, all right. I better get go and get that horse. Oh, yeah, okay. Sure do appreciate all you're doing for me, Mr. Yeah, Cartwright. You get yourself a good horse now. Bye. Whew. doing in here? Wilfred! Well, what's going on in here? What's this joker doing in the room? Well, he's a perfect stranger. Stranger? In, in your room in the middle of the night? He's got in the wrong room. Here. How dare you insinuate? <gasps> oh, Wilfred Sims, now look what you've got to do. What I've done? Oh, yes. Just wait till that barman opens his eyes and oh. then I'll show you oh, what I'm going to do. That wife stealer. These are for you. Oh, 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 stop it! Here! Oh, Mr. Help me. Cartwright! Oh! How could you do this to Mr. Ben Cartwright? Well, ma'am, I don't give a shucks who he is. He can't go wandering around my wife's room. I am not your wife. Oh, now, Lucy, oh, be you reasonable. Oh, poor man. Man, are you feeling better? What happened? Well, these barbarians here attacked you. Who are you calling barbarians? Yeah, yeah, what do you mean by that? Obviously, these two are in collusion. We are? Uh, but I assume that the actual barbaric attack was performed by that one. Don't call my husband names. Uh, Lucy, have some water, you please. called me your husband. I did not. You did, too, didn't she? You, you called me your husband. Uh, please, everybody, I, I... The whole thing is a mistake caused by my excessive drowsiness. I apologize to the young couple. I think I'll go back to sleep. 
Oh, uh, if you want to file charges in the morning, I'll be very happy to testify. Very kind. Oh, and by the way, the relationship here bears investigation. Get out! Will! I've had enough of your insults. Now get out! Why, how dare you talk to me that Ladies, way? Ladies, I want to thank you very much for, for everything that you've done for me. Oh. Now, Mr. Cartwright, now, if you should have any more trouble... I know, I'll call you, Mrs. Now, Jenkins. You, you'll Thank be you sure very much. You do that. Good night. Oh, oh Mr. Cartwright. Sorry, Mrs. Jenkins. Uh, I want to apologize again. I think I'll be able to find the right room this time. Just a minute. You too, Wilfred. Out. Oh, now, Lucy. Go, or I will call upon this gentleman to protect me. But you're my wife. I am not your wife. He lured me into a false marriage. I did not. I didn't know the preacher was a fake. Then you should have found out. You're still my wife. Protect me from this man! Look, I, I, I just don't understand what either one of you is talking about. It, it's very simple. Back in Kansas, he persuaded me to run away with him and get married and come to California. But on the way out, I found out that the preacher who married us wasn't a preacher at all. Because you was flirting with that fancy dude on the stage, and he told you so. He was not a fancy dude, and I was not flirting, and he knew the truth. Knew the preacher's name. Said he'd call himself anything. Preacher, judge, doctor, anything just to make a dishonest dollar. Wait a minute. Look, we, we, we got a preacher here. He's an honest-to-goodness honest minister. Why don't we all... Get some sleep tonight, and then tomorrow you can go to the minister and get yourself married all over again. Never. If I marry again, it won't be to someone so dumb he picks a fake preacher, but to someone with brains in his head and <laughs> romance in his soul. Well, like that, that, like that fancy dude? Maybe. But tomorrow I'm taking the first stage back to Kansas. Now get out! Women, how are we ever going to figure them? Well, we never do completely. Hey, why don't you try some of that romance she mentioned? Romance? Yeah. Worked before, didn't it? Might work again. Yeah, sure. <laughs> sure. You've changed. You ain't as nice as you was. Yes, sir. What can I do for you, sir? Is I Potts at your service? All right, just answer some questions. I'm looking for a punk kid from Texas. Is he staying here? The name, please? I don't know his name. But he's blonde and skinny and was wearing a checked shirt. Oh, I'm not sure that that description fits any of our guests. Uh, what was it you wanted of him, sir? I want to invite him to a poker game. Oh, well, that sounds like a pleasant diversion. But at this late hour, all of our guests are asleep. Why don't you try the salute? Room six, Larry Newell from Texas. Now, why didn't you say so in the first place? Oh, Mr. Newell. Yes, Mr. Potts. There's a man looking for you to invite you to a poker game. He's a mean-looking man with a gray hat. He went up to your room to look for you. That must be him coming back now. Well, look, don't tell him he saw me, and I'll make it worth your while. You will? Real worth your while. Thank you, sir.
He ain't there. Oh. Well, perhaps he went out while I was dozing. This night work is very tiring, you know? Any idea where he might be? I'm a hotel clerk, not the social editor of the paper. Any more smart words out of you and I'm going to shove them right down your throat. Now answer the question. I don't know. Honest. Anybody else been looking for him? The, the doctor. He sent for the doctor to tend a wound. So I plugged him, huh? That's good. Anybody else? Mr. Cartwright, a guest. I heard the doctor call upon him for his assistance. Where is this Cartwright? Oh, well, you can't disturb him. He's, he's a very tired man, Mr. Cartwright, and... Room number four. Hey, Mr. Busybody. Come on, get up. I want to talk to you. You wake up like that all the time? And what do you want? Where's that Newell kid? Who? That kid I winged for cheating me out of my money. I don't know where he is. And if I did know, I probably wouldn't tell you anyway. So why don't you just get out of here and let me go back to sleep, will you? I got a feeling he'll be back. And I'm waiting for him. Well, here you're not. I paid for this room. And I'm going to get some sleep. Now, will you please get out? Well. Shut the door, will you? Mr. Potts. Well, did you see Mr. Cartwright? Yeah, I saw him. Now I want to see Larry Newell. Give me a room near his. We're full up. Well, in that case, I'll just have to wait in his room. Really? This is most unorthodox. And without permission, I have no authority to allow anyone to visit a guest's room. When he comes back, uh, you won't tell him I'm waiting, now will you? Trying to court you romantic like. I mean, that's what you want, ain't it, Lucy? Romantic? Caterwauling around the hotel this time of night? Why, you've gone and wakened this nice man again. Yes, you certainly have. And a busy man like Mr. Cartwright needs his no, no, rest. No, 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 Mrs. Jenkins. Let, well, let, let me well, handle I'm this. I'm only trying I... to help Mr. Cartwright. I know you are, and, and, and Mrs. Jenkins, why don't you go back to your room and give well, yourself I... a good night's rest? And I do appreciate the interest that you've been Well, taking. that's perfectly all right. Now, and if I can be of any help, well, you, you call thank me. Thank you very much. Of course I will. I'm afraid that, uh, that Wilfred's... Uh, romantic tactics are as a result of a little talk that we had, Mrs. Sims. I am not Mrs. Sims. Well, I, oh, I, I, call I me know. Lucy. I declare, I don't know whether I'm Miss or Mrs. Well, Lucy, what what I'm trying to say is I'm trying to make the point that it's, he's trying to win back your affections the way he won them not too long ago. Yeah, and that ain't easy without repeating yourself. Well, I don't consider waking everybody up with your yell in any way to win a girl. I think it's about time that you two started 
listening to the facts instead of your emotions. What facts? Well, one of the facts is that this young lady is going back to Kansas on the stage tomorrow. Isn't that right? Now, the trouble with you two is that you've been suffering growing pains. And you'd be suffering those even if you were married. And the best way to get rid of them is to talk about them. Now, it still isn't too late tonight. The moon's still shining bright. You can go outside and walk and talk. And after you've talked it all out, then you can decide whether you go to your separate ways or whether you go to see a preacher in the morning. How about it, Lucy? Well, I guess a walk can't hurt a girl. I'll get my coat. Oh, oh I, sh I sure do thank you, Mr. Cartwright. Look, Wilbur, do me a favor. Don't argue with her. <gasps> Save that little pleasure for after you're married. Six. Oh, I'm sure I don't know, sir. Look, Lutz, I'm tired. Too tired to play games. Who is it? We didn't exchange amenities. He just said he wished to play poker with Mr. Newell. Shermer. Is that his name? We could certainly take some lessons in manners. Now listen, I want you to get Sheriff Coffey. What? Go get Sheriff Coffey. Tell him I want to see him up in my room. But I can't leave here with the safe open and all. Lock the safe. Now get him. And they told me to come west. Mr. Potts, where's that Shermer? I've been waiting outside and he ain't come out yet. What about that worthwhile talk of yours? Well, I gotta get upstairs first and get my wallet. Now, how about Shermer? Yes, that's a mean man, all right. He sure is, and he's trigger happy, too. He's the one who shot my leg. He did? He went out the back door. That's why you didn't see him. That's good. Thank you a lot, Mr. Potts. Golden Globe Hotel. Oh, Sheriff, the management will have my scalp for this. They'll blackball me all over the country. Arch. I hope you realize Arch. just exactly what this is Arch. going to. Will you please shut up and pull yourself together? Now, did you get the doctor? Of course. He'll be here as soon as he gets dressed. I told him we'd be needing him in his capacity of coroner. Coroner? I wish you'd stick to your knitting. That man ain't dead yet. Least ways he was still breathing when Ben and I carried him upstairs. No, 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 no. no. He's a goner for sure. Right there, did him in good. Oh, stop, will you? Are you accusing Ben Cartwright here of killing Shermer? Well, they were the only two fighting, weren't they? Ben. Ben. Hmm? Did you hear? Hmm? Potts here is accusing you of sticking a knife in Shermer. Oh. Well, that's, that's ridiculous. I didn't stick a knife in anybody. Who did that? Shut up, will you? Now, I'll do the investigating around here. Ben, tell me exactly what happened, if you will. I had this, uh, this wallet with uh, that young Texan had me keep it for him because he was afraid that Shermer was going to try to get the money back that he'd won from Shermer in that poker game. And anyway, I knew that Shermer was, was waiting for the young fellow from Texas. Good evening, Roy. Doc. And again to you, Ben. I, what are you doing up? You won't get proper rest like that. Now go to bed. Well, where's the body? 
Pops here tells me... Pops here is going to have to learn to mind his own business. Now, the man is upstairs, he's alive, and has a knife stuck in his back. Well, for heaven's sake... And don't worry about it. He's being watched over by a very charming guest to the hotel here, Mrs. Jenkins. Oh, is that... Where is he? In room number six. (laughs) Nice woman. Ben? Ben? Come on, please. Now, let's get on to that story. Hmm? What happened? You know, you were telling me. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, the uh, young young fellow, the Texas fellow, Larry, uh, he came running back and to get his wallet, and I gave him his wallet. And, you know, Shermer, he was hiding out in the young fellow's room, and he ran out of the room, started shooting at the young fellow. And I started wrestling with Shermer to stop him from shooting, and suddenly I was hanging on, and suddenly he went limp. There was a knife in his back. That's right. Shut up. It's Larry. What happened to him? Oh, oh yeah. Well, he, uh, he was just skedaddled. Oh, well, then I better get a deputy on him right now. We're going to need him. He'll never find that boy, you know. With all that money, he's, uh, he's long gone to Texas. Oh, boy. And that means that uh, I'm the only witness, Mr. Cartwright. And if that man up there dies... I think you're in serious trouble. Huh? What do you mean? Oh, simply that as the only witness, I could say anything that I want to. That you stabbed Shermer with that knife or, or that the young Texan threw the knife from down here. Anything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what, what you're really trying to say to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, is it... Uh, your memory is regulated by money. Oh, it's relative, my dear sir, relative. See, I'm a poor man, and, and what's, what's a lot of money to me, a poor man, is to you a rich man, a mere Mr. pittance. Potts. I could... Mr. Potts. Yes. Really, I've never been so insulted in my life. I offered to help that doctor up there, and he pushed me, literally pushed me out of the room. And what are you two chatting about? Well, we're, uh, we're chatting about a very interesting subject here, Mrs. Jenkins. Blackmail. Oh? Yes, blackmail. Mr. Potts is trying to decide whether he'd make more money out of me by being a witness for me or against me in case Mr. Shermer dies. Oh, we well, how dreadfully mercenary. Yes. Hey, Mrs. Jenkins, you're a witness. You saw the whole thing happen? Well, yes, I heard the shot, and, and, I, and I came out of my room in time to see that man fall down the stairs. After the fact! After the fact! Well, as a matter of fact, now, now that I think about it more clearly, I came out of my room before the shot. Uh, the sound of the scuffling and all, you know? Yeah. You know, Mrs. Jenkins, you're beginning to sound a little bit like Mr. Potts. Well... Well, I got my boys trailing that young Texan. Ms. Jenkins, how's the patient doing? Well, I really wouldn't know. That, uh, that doctor ejected me from the room. That case, we'll just have to wait for the doc. Sheriff! Potts! One of these days... I I'm... demand you arrest that man for murder. To have a murder, you got to have a corpse. Oh, how's he making out, doc? Well, he's still breathing, so he's no corpse. Hey, you made a good nurse. Oh. Doc? Do you think he ought to be left alone like that? Oh, I, uh, I cleaned the wound and I gave him something to ease the pain and make him sleep. Whether that knife caused internal bleeding, I won't be able to tell for some time, so I'll have to keep an eye on it. But right now, I would love a cup of coffee. How about it? I am not the chef. Oh, there's so many things you're not. Where is the coffee? In the office. Hmm. But I'll tell you one thing I am, Mr. Cartwright. That's a witness to violence, potential murder. Potts, be logical, will you? Even if Ben Cartwright did do it, it's obviously a case of self-defense. So that's the way it's going to be. The power of the rich against the word of the poor. The influence of the mighty. Roy, how how are the beds in jail? Well, we have no complaints on them. I ain't going to take that, Jasper's working. Roy, 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 take me over to the jail. Well, you ain't confessing, are you? 
The only thing I'm confessing to is that I'm so dark tired I'm going to fall asleep standing up. Now, will you take me to jail? Let's go. Oh, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, boy, you you were sure right about that moon and all. That's <laughs> right. I have forgiven Wilfred and consented to marry him. Well, and first thing in the morning, I'm going to wrestle that preacher right out of oh, bed. That's <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. Good night. Are you the sheriff here? That's right, ma'am. Well, then you must also be a justice of the peace. That's the way it usually is. Well, like most sheriffs, I am a justice of the peace. That's right. Wilfred, as justice of the peace, he can marry us tonight. What? What? I thought you, I thought you wanted a fancy wedding with all them doodads and stuff. We've had the doodads. Now all we want is to get married. Will you, Sheriff? This is the middle of the night. Everybody's tired and all. Oh, but that's the whole point, Sheriff. Otherwise, we got to wait all that time until tomorrow and everything. Well, if you put it that way. Oh, a wedding? How romantic. Don't you think so, dear Mr. Cartwright? Yeah, Roy, let's go to the jail. Oh, sorry, Mr. Cartwright, you, right, you can't do that. Yeah, you're going to be our best man. He's just right. got to be here. Why, he brought us together. If it weren't for him, I might have gone back to Kansas. Please, Sheriff. Ben, it's up to you. Please, Mr. Cartwright. Well, I was in a... almost the end of it. I guess I might as well be in at the beginning of it. <laughs> All right, let's get lined up right over here. A wedding. We must have some music. All right, kids, if you... Now, look, I'm just going to say the words. Tomorrow morning, I'll sign the papers. If it's all right with you, we'll stand right over here, please. That'll be just fine. Here's the ring, Mr. Cartwright. Doc, if you'll just stand right over here and give the bride away. Yeah. Well, do I have to give her away? She's cute enough to keep. <laughs> <laughs> You're not a coffee maker, either. <clears throat> all right, do you... What's your name? Oh, Sims. It sure is a pleasure to meet you, Sheriff. I don't mean that. Now get back over there. Yes, sir. No, your given name. Your first name. Lucy and Wilfred. Wilfred, your hat. Do you look? Do you look? Please, Sheriff. It is sort of romantic. All right, then. Go ahead and play, but keep it down. Now. Do you, Lucy, take Wilbur here? Wilfred. Do you, Lucy, take Wilfred as your lawfully wedded husband to have and to hold in sickness and health to love Vanner and obey so long as you shall both live? I do. Now, do you, William? Wilfred. Do you, Wilfred? Take Lucy here as your lawfully wedded wife. Oh, I do. Not now. Do you, Wilfred, take Lucy here as your lawfully wedded wife to have and to hold in sickness and the house to cherish and protect so long as you both shall live? Now, Wilfred. What? I do. Oh, I do. Oh, I do. <sighs> All right, now's the time when the best man is supposed to give you the ring. Ben, the ring. Ben. Ben, I'm sorry. Ben, the ring. Hmm? You need the ring for the wedding. Oh, here, 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 here. Here. Okay. Here you are, son. Oh, thank you, sir. For you, Lucy. No, no, no. When he tells you, you put it on her finger. Oh, hey, um, when do I give her away? Now is as good a time as any. Well, honey, up so easy. <clears throat> By the powers vested in me, I now pronounce... Come right in, boy. Stand right there. Sheriff, here's your man. Yeah. Where'd you find him? Just out of town, headed back. Did he just say that you were headed back this way? Yeah. I got to thinking. I shouldn't have thrown that knife and just run like I did. You throwed that knife? Well, sure. He was shooting at me, and it's the only thing I had to protect myself with. Well, Doc, how is he? Oh, Sherman's gonna live. Don't you worry about that. Sherman's all right. I don't know about me. They were starting to accuse me of throwing that knife. Well, Sheriff, that's foolish. Mr. Potts here, he saw me throw it. Potts! 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 
But there has got to be more than a dozen things in the books that I can charge you with. Now, here, Bill, take this weasel over to the jail and lock him up. All right, Roy. Come on, Potts. And they told me to come west. Son, I... I don't know what to do with you. He threw that knife in self-defense. I can testify to that. Sure. All right, son, you can go. You mean I'm free? Yeah, and get that bandage changed. Yeah. Well, thank you, Doc, <laughs> Mr. Cartwright. Right. Away you go. Goodbye, right. sir. <laughs> Off you go. Be careful now. <laughs> Roy, this time I'm getting some sleep for sure. Amen. This time you do it, or you're going to become a patient. I'll do it this time. Mm. <laughs> Good night, all. Good night. Good night. Good night. Sheriff, just a minute. Are we married or not? Ben, where'd I leave off, you know? Uh, can you remember? Uh, um, you left off right after I gave her away. All right, by virtue of the powers vested in me, I now pronounce you man and wife good night. You can kiss the bride now, William. The oh, don't you just love weddings, Mr. Cartwright? Good night, patient. Good night, Mrs. Jenkins. Come on, move over. Mm -hmm.